come on. <coughs> okay. Do you remember what an atom is? What's an atom? It's an indivisible particle. I like it. That was according to who? Dalton. Do we believe it's indivisible today? No. It's made of what we call subatomic particles. And we kind of left off with them the other day. There are three subatomic particles. What are they? Protons, neutrons, electrons. Okay. The protons have a positive charge, the neutrons have a neutral charge, and the electrons have a negative charge. Remember all this? So when we talk about the word atom, do you remember what I told you in terms of subatomic particles? How would you describe an atom in terms of subatomic particles? An atom is neutral. Good. And if it's neutral, it's going to have the same number of what types of subatomic particles? Protons and electrons. Good. So that's a neutral atom. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because... Bum, 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 um, I found on, let me just stop the recorder until I pull it up, I'm going to learn. Okay, so on the board, I pulled up a question from a, a New York State Regents, it was in 2019, um, look at question number 52. Well, first of all, let's look at the, let's look at the actual chart that's up here. It says in the first column, isotope. What's an isotope? It, an atom it is an atom, but what else do we know about isotopes? Say it again. Well, it could have more or less. The number of neutrons change. And it, there's no normal. Um, go ahead. Keep going with that. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So we know what an atom is. Now let's define isotope, because I think some people are forgetting what an isotope is. An isotope are two different atoms. Okay, They're different from each other in the sense that they are going to have the same atomic number, but different mass numbers. So let's say we have an atom. That's what I mean by two different atoms. I have an atom of carbon, and carbon has how many protons? Yes, I hear it. I hear it over there. Six. Okay. So if you don't remember that, we're going to go over to our reference tables, and you're going to look at carbon. And in the lower left-hand corner, there's a number six right there. Okay, that's this number. That's the atomic number. And if I have another carbon atom, so two different atoms, this atom and this atom, it also has six as its protons. So they're both carbon. What is different about them are the mass numbers, which is the number in the top left corner. Do you remember mass number? Okay. This mass number is equal to the protons plus the neutrons. This number up here is protons plus neutrons. They have different mass numbers, but the same atomic number. That's what an isotope is. Okay. So in this question on this regions that I found before by total accident, we were just poking around, Okay. it has a column that says isotope H1, H2, and H3. What does the 1, the 2, and the 3 refer to? Ash? The what number? Mass number. The mass number. Ex excellent. That number is the mass number. 
they're not going to give you the atomic number because you can get that right from your periodic table. So that H1, that H2, and that H3 could really be written like this. H1, H2, and H3. It is the mass numbers. That's these numbers right here. 1, 2, and 3. Then it gives you the names of these isotopes. So they have those really cool names like protium, deuterium, and tritium. It gives you the atomic mass. That's the actual mass of that particular atom. Okay, and it gives you something called the natural abundance, which we're going to talk about today. Okay, now let's skip down to this. It says number 52. Explain in terms of subatomic particles why H1, H2, and H3 are electrically neutral. Hold on a second. Let everybody think about that for a second. Why are they neutral? And you have to answer that question with the subatomic particles. And do you remember those subatomic particles are protons, neutrons, and electrons? Okay? All right, Ash. Give us your best shot. Because the mass number is just protons and neutrons, but there is still an equal number of protons and electrons. That's the answer, right there. It has nothing to do with neutrons. Because electrical neutrality, the fact that it is neutral, has only to do with the things that have charge. And there's only two things that have charge, protons and electrons. So they wanted you to know, or they wanted you to explain why the atom, and see how they use the word atom in here? By the way, chemistry is mostly reading. And reading the questions are what we have to work on. Okay, so why atoms, and atoms, we already talked about that, are neutral. Well, why are they neutral? They are neutral because they have the same number of protons and electrons. Did it have anything to do with isotopes in that question? Nope. They're trying to pull a trick -a -roo on you. Okay? So don't let them. They were only talking about neutrality, why the atom was neutral. Okay, Buzz? Got it? All right. Um, determine the formula mass. We can't do that yet. And the decay mode, we can't do that yet. So we can't do these two questions yet in this particular set, but we could answer this question. Okay? Now, let's get back to our isotopes. So you had three isotopes. And I'm just going to use these three since I have them up on the board. Okay? And on the periodic table, if you pull up your periodic table and you look at hydrogen on the periodic table, let's find it. The mass, the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1.00794. Does everybody see that on their periodic table? Hydrogen has an average mass of 1.00794. This number is an average. Let's pretend we're in math class. You can't see what I'm writing. That's an average. Okay? Let's pretend you're in math class. How do you calculate averages? Nick? Add it all together and divide. Okay? That's what you do. So, if we wanted to find the average of all the hydrogens in the world, in the universe, we would have to count every single hydrogen, add them all up, divide by the number of hydrogens we counted. Now, can you count that many hydrogens? No, you can't. It's w There's way too many. These suckers are way too small. So we have to do it a different way. We have to do it with something called percent abundancies. Okay, let me explain to you how that works. I'm going to use, I'll use H1, 2, and 3. Let's say we have a sample. That is not a pen. Let's say we have a sample. Don't write anything down. Just think and listen. Okay? So I took a sample of hydrogen from something. And in that sample, I had hydrogen 1, hydrogen 1. These are all atoms of hydrogen. I had five of them, let's just say. Okay? Don't write. Just listen, look, think. Okay? Over here... In the sample, there are also some hydrogens that have a mass of 2. And there may be one, 
that has a mass of 3. That's 8, right? Let's actually, let's actually add a couple more H1s. So now we have 10 in our sample. Just makes our math a little bit easier. Okay. So I've got an H3, I've got two H2s, and I've got seven H1s. Okay, what do I have the most of? H1. Which means if I were to add up all the masses in my sample, old-fashioned way, math way, I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, eleven, fourteen. I don't know why I hesitated there. Fourteen. If I added up all the masses of all of these guys, I'd have fourteen, correct? Did I add right? Three, five, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now divide by how many you have, which is 10. 14 divided by 10 gives you 1.4. I'm going to write that up here. 1.4 is the average mass. Good news. Do you see how that average is closer to the 1 than it is to the 3? Why do you think that is? There's more H1s. So when I look at the average on the periodic table, which is 1.00794, what is the isotope that is the most common isotope? Is it H1, H2, H3, H4, H6, H20? What's the one that's the most common? What is that 1.00794 close to? 1. It's close to 1. So it's close to one. Most of the hydrogens in the universe are going to be hydrogen ones. That's what it means. Okay. If I look at carbon, what are most of the carbons in the universe? They're mostly carbon 12s. Are there carbon 14s out there? Yes. Are there carbon 18s out there? Yes. But most of them are carbon 12s. Okay. So now let's go back. Keep in mind that my average that I calculated old-fashioned way was 1.4. Okay? We can't do it the old-fashioned way in science because we can't count and divide by the number that we have. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do it with something called the percent abundancies. So my percent abundancies, do you know how to calculate a percent? How do you calculate a percent? What's the formula for percent? Go ahead, Nick. You forget? Okay. This formula for percent is very important because we use it all year long. Okay, so this formula I want you to write down. Abby, go ahead. Tell us what you think it is. That's percent error. Okay, I want percent. All right. It's close to percent error, but it's just percent. So we're going to do the part that we want the percent of. So I'm going to abbreviate that with a P. And then I'll, may, I'll write down art down here. That's the part. Divided by the whole amount times 100. Okay. So this is part divided by whole times 100. Let's look at our sample. What is the whole? The whole is the total number of hydrogen atoms that I have, which I made 10 to make our life really easy. Okay. So if I want to find the percent of H1. How many of them are H1s? Seven, right? So the part that's H1 is going to equal seven. And the whole thing, which is all of them, is going to be ten. 7 divided by 10 times 100 
gives me 70% H1s. So in that sample, I've got 70% of my hydrogens are H1s. All right, now let's find the percent that is H2. The percent that's H2 is going to be, how many did I make? Two, right? So two, the whole thing didn't change. It's still 10 times 100. That's going to give me 20% H2. How much H3 do I have? One out of ten times a hundred is going to give me ten percent of H3. So far, so good. You understand what happened there. I still have most of my sample being H1, some of my sample being H2, and very little of my sample being H3. These three percentages, in this case, there were three isotopes, so there's three parts. These three have to add to 100%. 99 0 0.9885, 0.0115. I bet you if you add these together, they're going to come out to 100%. Can somebody check that for me? You have a calculator in front of you? Okay. 5 and 5 is 10. 8 and 2 is 10, 8 and 2 is 10, 9 and 1 is 10, 100%. Okay, so it comes out to 100%. So they're saying the H3, there's really none of them. There's very little percentage of H2, and there's a lot of H1. I didn't make the same percentages in my sample size, but this is their sample size. You understand where these numbers are coming from? Okay. Now let's go back to my example because my numbers are a lot nicer looking than their numbers. 99.99 is an ugly number. We're going to use these percent abundances to calculate the average isotopic mass and see do we get the same as what we got when we did it the old-fashioned way. Okay, So we had 70% of H1. We had 20% of H2, and we had 10% of H3. Here's how you do it. This is not a formula that is given to you on your reference tables, but it is something that is asked on every single Regents exam. Okay? You're going to take the percent, in this case 70%. You're going to multiply it by its mass. Not its mass number, its mass. I didn't give you a mass, so we're going to use the mass numbers. But they're going to give you a mass. I bet you they gave it to you on here. I don't remember, but let's look. Here's the mass. Okay? Not the mass number, not this number over here, the actual mass. We're going to take 70%, we're going to multiply it by 1. We're going to take that, we're going to add to it, 20% times 2. We're going to add to that 10% times 3. That's the answer. Now, we didn't do the math part, but that's the answer. Okay? So now we have to talk about how do we put that in our calculators. When you put a percent into your calculator, you need to change it to a decimal. How do you change 70% to a decimal? 0 0.70. You move the decimal two places to the left. All I'm doing is rewriting this again. So 0.7 times 1 plus 20% change it to a decimal 0 0.20 times 2 plus 10% times 3.10 times 3. All right, 70% of 1, 0.7 times 1, gives us 0.7. Plus 0.2 times 2 gives us 0.4. Plus 0.1 times 3 
is going to give us 0.3. When I add all of these up, do I get 1.4? Good news, because when we did it the old-fashioned way, we got 1.4. Uh-oh, hold on to your calculator. When we do it with the percent abundances, we also get 1.4. It works the same way. You cannot do it the old-fashioned way for these calculations. So let's go and let's actually do... Um, No, we're not going to do that one because they don't ask us to. Let's find let's find one that we can do. This and I didn't turn the thing on. Okay, that's better. So these three will add to 100%. Okay, I'm going to erase that. I just want you to remember that from what we did before. Here's your masses, your three masses. Okay. This number 55. You can't do 53 or 54 yet. You don't know them. Oh, actually, you do know 54. We could do that one next. 55, show a numerical setup for calculating the atomic mass of the element silicon. Okay. How do we calculate the atomic mass, average atomic mass of silicon, given the abundances in percent and the masses? How did we do it here? We took the percent and we multiplied it by its mass. So look here. Here's the percent, 92.22. We need to multiply by its mass. In this case, the mass was 27.98. These are not pretty numbers, but it is what it is. Okay? So I'm going to see if I have some room here. Let's erase this. Point, I'm sorry, 92.22% times 27.98 plus, I know, I, I hate that I don't have room here. Mm. I'm going to write them underneath each other. You write them across this way, okay? But I'm writing them underneath, okay? 4. 69% times 28.98 plus 3.09% times 29.97. Okay. I really don't like this. Hold on one second. I'm just rewriting it because I want you to, I want you to see. 92.22% times 27.98 plus 4.69% times 28.98 plus 3.09% <coughs> times 29.97. Okay. I just wrote it across. I want you to be able to see something. Do you see how I left the percent sign here? That is indicating that I did not move that decimal point yet. If you write this, 92.22 times 27.98 plus 4.69 times 28.98, plus 3.09 times 29.97, it will be marked wrong. And the reason it will be marked wrong is because you're not indicating these are percents. Okay? So be careful of that. If you leave the percent sign on, you can leave them. If you don't leave the percent sign on, you must move that decimal two places to the left. See the difference? Okay. Another little trick rooney that they like to pull on you. I know that I'm, I'm writing this over and over again. I don't want you writing it down. I just want you listening and learning right now. Sometimes what they will do is they will take this. Copy it. Paste it. And they will put it 
all over 100. If they do that, that's like taking this and dividing it by 100 and just putting the um, decimal two places to the left. Okay, so watch that. Sometimes they, they pull that little trick -a rooney They'll take these out and they'll put it over 100. That's okay because you're indicating that the percentages are being turned into a decimal. Okay? And the reason I tell you this is because sometimes these questions are given to you as multiple choice and they'll give you a bunch of choices. Watch that. Watch that they change the percent to a decimal. Okay? All right, now let's go back and just do this problem. Okay? So we're going to take 0 0.9 2.22 times 27.98 plus 0 0.0469 times 28.98 plus 0 0.0309 times 29.97. Plug that into your calculator and let's see what we come up with. Okay, here you go. Does that look right? Yay, I didn't plug it into my calculator wrong. Okay. Now, these are ugly numbers. I understand that. There are rules on whether we can round or we can't round. Okay? The rules are called significant figures. Today is not a lesson on significant figures. We will do significant figures this year sometime. I don't know exactly when I will do them with you, but I will do them with you. This number is ugly. Let's just round it to two decimal places because everything else up here is rounded to two decimal places. So let's go 28.09 as our answer. Again, there are rules for whether you can round and to how many, how many digits you round to. But you don't know those yet, so right now we're just going to round to two but you always round at the end. You never round in the middle. Don't round up here or up here or up here. Round at the end, okay? All right, you ready to try some on your own? See if you can do them? Okay. Let's look at this question. I was gonna give you this worksheet, but it, there's a lot of ugly questions on this worksheet. So take out a piece of paper. Let's try number one. Could everybody see it? Try to make it as big as possible. Can you see that? You know, you want me to give you the paper and that way? We're only going to do a few of them on here. Okay, hold on. Let me shut this off. What I'm doing? I know what I'm doing. I've, I've done this before. I've done this before. Yeah, I know. Okay, so let's look at number 12. Again, I told, I told you as I was walking around, this I think is supposed to be a 63. I mean a 65. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. It says there are two isotopes of copper that naturally occur, 63 and 65. The 63 copper atoms, which occur at 77.93% of the time, have a mass of 62.929601 atomic mass units. And the copper 65 atoms have a mass of 64.927794. So we know that these two numbers, 77.93, that's their mass. We also know the mass of the copper 65s. However, we don't know the percentage of the 65s. This 77.93% plus the other percent has to add to 100, right? Didn't we look at that before? Okay, so now, I don't know where I wrote it. There we go. It has to add to 100%. So now we have to go back to our paper, and we have to figure out what the percentage is for the copper 65 atoms. 100% minus the 77.93%. And you should have gotten 22.07%. Because remember, 
that they always have to add to 100%, these two numbers, okay? So this is going to be 22.07% of the copper 65s. Okay, now, before we do any math, some of you have this done, what is my average going to be closer to? Is it going to be closer to 63 or is it going to be closer to 65? 63 because 77.9% of the time I have copper 63. So now let's do it. 77.93%. I'm going to move my decimal over as I do this. 7793 times 62.929601 plus the new percentage is 0.2207 times 64.927794. And now we can just do some happy math. And you should get, if I did my math correct, 63.37. Somebody confirm that answer for me. Yes. Okay. What? Yes. And then stay in there. Can I take a string cheese? No, just, what? There's string cheese in No, I don't know what that is. Okay. How do we feel about this stuff? Okay. All right, now keep in mind, and I told a few of you as I was walking around, when you get a regions question, they most likely will not ask you for the answer. They are going to ask you for this, the correct numerical setup. And they're going to give you the information in a chart. We'll practice some of those tomorrow. Okay? Right now I'm going to stop the recorder. I want you to finish up the Rutherford lab. We are looking at...